So with this vast experience, I welcome uh, Dr. Abdul Alim Khan, sir. Please uh, deliver your talk uh, in the context of climate change and biodiversity in this People's uh, Conference on Climate Change. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. I welcome the um, uh, invitation given by the Council for Green Revolution. So today's talk is in wake of uh, COP26. So basically, I will be talking on some points like uh, what is actually a climate change and then I will be going on what is the role of this COP and the way, what are the conventions we previously conducted by the COP uh, convention. I will be talking various concepts and uh, let me begin my talk. So climate change, what is a climate change? Climate change is generally a shift of temperature and weather patterns uh, that may be due to uh, any reason that could be due to natural or that may be due to because of the human or anthropogenic activities. They have told that from uh, since 1800, we can see that a lot of human activities have been a major force to change the climate. And basically, they have told that this climate change or shift in temperature or weather pattern is due to burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas or whatever the gas we get from the fossil source. So burning of these fossil fuels generate a lot of greenhouse gases. So there are a lot of greenhouse gases. One of them predominant is carbon dioxide and some of the sulfur oxides and some of the nitrogen oxides. So what do they do? These, when we burn the fossil fuels, like coal, oil, or gas, we can see that gradually, the temperature of the earth surface increases okay and uh, it will also make the particularly problem in the entire atmosphere what to the atmosphere is it in the entire atmosphere it will be making change what are the changes will re will uh, try to sort out these things and uh, now they told that greenhouse gases will cause a lot of let me say trouble like uh, they will release carbon dioxide, they'll release methane or so many things they will be making. And uh, one of the major problem nowadays when we see in the urban communities is the uh, landfills or whatever the disposal of waste, solid waste. Disposal of solid waste or disposal of garbage has become the major problem or major source of greenhouse gas emissions. So when these garbage or waste coming from domestic origin or from the, uh, the dom domestic origin or industrial origin, these uh, the waste stages or these garbages are being uh, dumped in an open area and then it is covered with the land or soil. And this will make the anaerobic conditions in the soil and a lot of methane producing uh, agencies or methane producing living organisms will attack and they will make the lot of methane release and that will be one of the reason of the emission of greenhouse gas and these landfill sites are nowadays being uh, due to urbanization vast urbanization these areas are being colonized and lot of building uh, are constructed in the suburb areas and these suburb areas which are being constructed uh, use for construction purpose are not suitable because of the emissions of the gas from the garbage decomposition so as i told you the just now that climate and weather are generally a two different terms climate is generally for long areas uh, like long zones but weather is for the small areas or small places that is and as I told you just now, the climate change, what is the climate change? And what are the measures of climate change? How can you find out the climate has changed or how the temperature has been affected or how a weather of a place is affected? So all these things are known by uh, five simple kind of measures like glaciers. Recently, in the last uh, year, we have seen the melting of uh, glaciers in the Uttarakhand and precipitation trends rise in the sea levels and uh, 
we can have the quantitation of carbon dioxide concentration in the air that could be also one of the measure and then consider the greenhouse effect what we know and now i will be talking to you something about a different thing that what who report is saying who or world health organization in recent time has uh, given a report which says that 90% of the world children are breathing in toxic air so this is an alarming kind of warning a report whatever who report is there the who report is saying that whatever the um, air whatever the air is there now used for breathing purpose or whatever the resp uh, respiratory system is accepting the air this air is unsafe so you can guess that percentage what the percentage of air 90 more than 90 percent of the air is unsafe air it is why why this is unsafe this is unsafe because the world is getting lot of pollution or lot of pollutants why they are, why we are getting this pollutants or what why pollution is uh, happening just because of anthropogenic activities or just we can say this is due to the whatever human man-made activities are there one of the reason for all these is the man-made activities and uh, major is uh, impact on the climate change major uh, pollute uh, what are the level of pollution is there the major reason of this pollution is in having its impact on the particularly climate change so uh, the as per a, a ngo in a europe they have made a survey in the different countries in, around the europe and they have told the seven factors are getting affected by the particular pollution the seven factors are like co2 emissions and uh, pm uh, the whatever the particulate matter is there it is uh, more than 2.5 in urban areas and uh, air pollution is contributing to the deaths of humans not only plants and animals but humans are getting a death sentence because of the unknown air pollution and then the quality as i told you just now landfills where the garbages are buried these are also the source for making the groundwater polluted an amount of waste amount of forest area amount of protected area for terrestrial and marine kind of living forms is also getting day by day affected or it is a major factor so here they have told that the emissions whatever the emissions are there the emissions are very high when we compared these levels in last two million years ago now the earth is facing a great debacle or great demerit so here the most polluted country as the most vast polluted uh, populated country is also china and uh, the polluted country is also china china is giving more amount of carbon dioxide followed by united states and we are fortunately or unfortunately in the third place in the first five positions if we check the first five positions our country is in the uh, third place out of five so as the first leading uh, polluted or carbon dioxide contributing country is china and followed by china united states and then india then comes is russia and japan though japan is not dense populated though it is contributing a high amount of carbon dioxide to the ecosystem or environment so this is told that uh, whatever the forest area is there as per that ngo they have told that the this is the finland finland is the topmost green i mean to say country compared with other countries you can see in this graph and then you can see the annual a particulate air 2.5 in the urban countries so we can see turkey is the most Im, uh, uh, important or it is the first leading uh, polluting uh, polluting country for the uh, atmosphere and sweden again is in the last place and then comes this deaths generally due to air pollution polluted air they have seen uh, per capita that one lakh so they found that latvia latvia is the one which is having leading deaths due to polluted air again sweden is in the last place so here the waste generating countries per kg per uh, capita is uh, capita is denmark denmark is a country which is giving lot of waste in the uh, in whole europe okay then poland is a play a country which is giving less waste or generating less domestic and industrial waste 
So now we are going to talk something about UNFCCC. It is United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. It was uh, the particularly uh, framed in 1992 by uh, United Nations Conference on Earth on Environment and Development. Uh, that is also called as Earth Summit and also called as Rio or uh, Rio uh, Conference. So where they have made the particularly selected countries, by selecting some countries, they have made uh, three Rio conventions and uh, they have made the COP, Convention of Parties. Okay, so in this we have the particularly uh, one is, uh, one of the Rio convention is on the biological diversity, other one is on the combat the desertification, what land is losing the green life to, to stop it, they have generally gone for the particularly a convention on land that is the combat for desertification. And uh, in to, uh, 1994, 197 countries has joined the CNFCC and uh, the secretariat was made and it is uh, the whatever CNFCC is, is there, it is in Germany, it is located, its office is located in the particularly Bonn, Germany Bonn. Okay, now we are going to talk something about the particular convention of parties. Okay, so here we can see that COP, COP meets every year. So this whatever CNFCC is there, it holds particularly the con convention every year. And uh, we can see that the first convention was held in Germany itself at Berlin. Okay, and uh, followed by that we have a lot of other countries which have holded the this convention, the COP. So the COP president normally is from uh, United Nations regional uh, groups like uh, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Caribbean and Central and uh, Eastern Europe and Western Europe. So these people will be the president of the COP office. And the president is usually the environment minister, whatever the COP president, uh, whatever the CN, uh, UNFCC president is there, he will be the environment minister from the country, whatever the uh, regions, regional regions we have told, from the regional, uh, he will be, uh, the environment minister will be the president of this particular convention. And we can see that it was started in the COP1 was now the present we are at the COP26. So this COP1 was held in Germany and followed by so many other conventions you can see here, like uh, one was held at COP8 in our country, okay, it was the, uh, the, the main theme or aim of this uh, was to mitigate the climate change and followed by that Indonesia and uh, so many other countries have uh, con hold, uh, organized this convention and we can see the last was held in 2019 and after that due to covid the convention was not uh, conducted after uh, spain the next year was in glasgow just now what we are uh, seeing so this is the overall list of the particularly uh, climate i mean to say uh, climate change conventions which are the major conventions of the climate change which has occurred in different places these are not the conventions which are being held by CNF, UNFCC. So these are the major ones. Like we can see the target of this was first, which was held in 1971 in Iran was for protecting the wetlands. And the other one was for uh, Stockholm. At Stockholm, it was conducted in 2004 and it was to um, uh, avoid or reduce the burden of organic pollutants. And then we have one more, it was in the particularly wake of endangered species of wild fauna and flora in 1975. And again, it was a conservation of biological diversity and Bonn Convention was for migratory species of wild animals and uh, Vienna Convention was held and it was in wake of ozone protection, ozone layer protection. And likewise, we can see the Kyoto Protocol, which is very important. Montreal Protocol and Kyoto Protocol are very important ones. Uh, to uh, Montreal was for ozone and Kyoto was for particularly reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, likewise, we can see the again, Katagina Protocol is also very important and uh, frequently it is discussed in our Council for Green Revolution meetings. 
that Cartagena protocol. So this is the very important proto I mean to say convention which was uh, held in the particularly in year 2003 for the safety of the biological diversity. And uh, Nagyo is a, a protocol which is very important for uh, benefit sharing, sharing of benefits uh, from one country to other country, whatever the um, biological diversity is utilized. So sharing the benefits of that is being the most important part of this. And then COP24 was held in the uh, uh, Convention on Climate Change, like this 21. And Minimata is also very important because Minimata was in the aim for uh, protecting the health from the adverse effects of mercury because mercury the pollution of mercury compounds was also very important part and uh, the 2019 was held in paris and uh, the it was for the framework of climate change okay so now this is the uh, present generation what we are now witnessing is cop26 it is generally for um, reducing the use of uh, uh, fossil energy sources, reducing the car, use of uh, fossil energy like petrol, diesel products, whatever products are there, reduce and uh, decrease the carbon emissions, whatever carbon emissions is there, that is the main aim of what is held in the Glasgow. And like this, I will be talking, uh, summing up my talk with these few points that what happens when temperature increases. So we can see that whatever the temperature is there, increase in temperature generally have a bad effect on the growth crop yield. What a crop yield is there, crop yield will be badly affected. Why? Because here we can see that whatever the photosynthesis, whatever the high um, Whatever the high amount of temperature is there, increase in temperature is there, increase in temperature generally uh, will generally lower the particularly uh, yield. And uh, generally, we can see that whatever the grains, whatever the grains to be made, whatever the grains made are there in the panicle, that will decrease. And uh, the filling of the particularly seeds, whatever seeds is there, that is also gets decreased. So here you can compare it. Here it is a comparison between the plant grown at high temperature and a plant grown at ambient temperature, optimum temperature. You can compare both of them. So here it is a spikelet of the wheat. You can see where you can compare the yellow zone is the yellow zone is nothing, but it is the particularly the high temperature impact on the green filling. And uh, the atmospheric, if the carbon dioxide increases, what happens? increase in carbon dioxide will have a lot of impact like uh, exchange of gas will reduce in both the c3 and c4 plants and the plant will be unable to accumulate more and more sugar and uh, like we can see a lot of other uh, impact will be there on the uh, uh, photosynthesis efficiency water use efficiency capacity and uh, the growth and all that will be affected because of this uh, atmospheric increase so they have told that the elevated carbon dioxide is going to be the uh, very bad impact on the atmospheric ozone also. Now, the, the more important indirect effect of the climate change is on the pests and diseases. So due to change in temperature, generally we can see that whatever the pollinating insects are there, the pollinating insects will get affected and uh, then we can see that whatever the pollination uh, time, the pollination time of this will change and a lot of other insects which are harmful insects, pathogenic insects, they will start, I mean to say, infecting the plants and the crops will get a lot of, I mean to say, diseases just because of change in the temperature and the untimely change in temperature will uh, impact on the crop yield. So, and also we can see that the increase uh, will also impact on the um to say the climate change also have a, its effect on the weeds unwanted plants unwanted plants also will increase a lot in the wake of the climate change so with this i will come to an end over here so over to the organizers thank you uh, dr abdul Ahmad Abdul Alim Khan, sir. It was a wonderful presentation.